because I was not taught to offend people. I was not raised. All I was trying to do, whether it came out harsh, came out nice, soft, difficult, the intention was based on love. The intention was based on love because my God is love. Son of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his infinite love, mercy, and kindness to allow us once again to be in his holy church and uh, sharing his word, which is the only truth that ever exists, and that is the word of the Holy Bible, Jesus Christ and the making. I thank the Lord for everyone who is present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming. And I pray that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, and all your faithfuls that are present in the church and those who are watching us through live streaming, I pray that you have been doing well in the last or the past six weeks, which we haven't been with you in the flesh, but we have been in the spirit because in Christ we are all united always. Amen. Amen. Let me put my glasses. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> All right. Um, I came today not in a sense of preaching, but I came in the sense of just talking and sharing a few things with you, my beloveds. I love you more than myself but the Lord loves you the most um, first of all I came unprepared and I believe I am never prepared when it comes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth no matter how much we study no matter how much we research, no matter how much we listen and discover things, we are always never ready because we are talking about someone who is simply God revealed in the flesh. Who can talk about God? Who can explain who God is and what God is? Who can ever fathom the awesomeness and the deity of God who can ever understand the wisdom of God the will of God the thought of God and the person of God but it is the grace of the Lord and that love of our Heavenly Father that sent him to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world and the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us through the sacrament of baptism that we are giving this privilege and this grace to talk about God. First of all, with absolute love and humility, I thank everyone who has prayed for this piece of wreck. For Bishop Murray. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm not worthy of this love, but I pray the Lord Jesus reward you abundantly in this realm, in this, in this life and in the next. I know and I've been told there are so many people 
throughout the world that have been praying. Not only here in Australia, but all over the world. I don't know everyone, but I know one thing, the Lord knows you all. And I ask the Lord Jesus to bless you, to keep you in good health and in good spirit, and bring you always close to him, because we need to believe in this. There is no other way but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whether we believe in it, whether we accept it, whether we acknowledge it or not, there is only one way to heaven and there is only one way to God the Father, that is his beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period. Period. I believe there are people who have been fasting as well. Not only just praying, but have been fasting. I thank all the fathers, the deacons of the church, the nuns, all the faithfuls, here and abroad, for the love that you have shown to this bishop and for the support. Um, have I missed you? I don't think there are enough words to express how much I have missed you. Um, yeah. But I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord always. So thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your uh, beautiful wishes. I thank everyone who, whether they were clergymen or laity, who sent flowers, best wishes, cards to the church. Um, I have received big box of letters from all over the world. People have sent letters from everywhere. People have sent best wishes from all over. It's, I don't know. It's funny. When I was a little boy, I used to play those marbles, the round ones, you know. We used to play as little innocent kids. How the Lord navigates your life on earth. It's nothing short of a miracle. When I look at that little boy and I look at this Santa Claus, Nothing to do with that little boy. I would like to also say that in my, in my entire life, the way I was raised at home by my earthly parents and more so my mother. They always taught me to love everyone and they always taught me to be there for those who are in need. And as I grew older, I came to learn more about the Lord Jesus came to know him more and more and he is the teacher the teacher that teaches how to love and how to be there for those who are in need and also speak the truth for he is the truth 
Having said this, I'd like to say, if throughout our preachings for all these many years, if we have offended any human being, regardless of their ethnicity, of their color, of their race, and of their religious backgrounds, regardless, if this bishop had offended any human being, I can assure you, definitely was not intentional. Because I was not taught to offend people. I was not raised. All I was trying to do, whether it came out harsh, came out nice, soft, difficult, the intention was based on love. The intention was based on love because my God is love. My God is the truth. My God is the source of life. So when my God teaches me all I say, regardless how it comes out, but the essence of it, the foundation of it, the meaning behind it all, it's nothing but love. Because when you are embraced by this love, when you are entrenched by this love, when you are submerged fully in this love, you can only speak the language of love. But sometimes love can also hurt. But the intention is love. I was trying to introduce my Lord Jesus to the whole world. Whatever you believe in, that is your choice. Whatever all of us believe in, this is a choice we make. And whatever choice you have made in your life, you are free to do that. And I respect that. I respect that. I never forget my origin. I come from the Middle East. We lived in a country where we were surrounded by neighbors who were not Christians. And to be more specific, our beloved Muslims. We lived for years together. And I can say this, the neighbors we came to know, the neighbors we came to have a relationship with for years on end, I will never swap them for the world because they were wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Muslim people. Wonderful. All I know is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't know anyone else. And I don't choose to know anyone else. Because when I came to know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everything I was looking for, everything I was searching for, everything I was desiring, and I was in need of, I found in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the moment, and the moment we find what we are looking for, we no longer search. The moment that void, that gap, that emptiness is filled, I don't need to look anywhere else to fill that gap because there is no more room for nothing else and nobody else. And this is, this is the question to every Christian. And speaking of Christians, throughout our talk, 
folks if we had really spoken harshly it was about the Christians about the church and how the church is so weak how the church is living in denial of her Messiah if anything I spoke the harshest of all about us Christians and since I spoke about Christians then I am one of them so I'm not judging because I'm talking about myself before I talk about anyone else but if the Lord was misunderstood who am I if the Lord was misunderstood who am I those church leaders who spoke in the open against me if I see them I will kiss their feet and I say to them I forgive you I have nothing in my heart my dear friend I have Jesus and since I have Jesus I cannot do anything but love even the ones who persecute me because that's the Lord this is Jesus Christ do you think Jesus Christ is a, just a story a myth a book we read no Jesus Christ is life I need to live his life so if I have offended any non-christian I'm sorry that wasn't my intention 